What is up guys, Best Reviews here, and I'm here to do a One Piece discussion pertaining to the Revolutionaries and um, who's in the Revolutionaries, what they will do, how strong they are, you know, stuff, stuff like that, stuff like that. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. First point, um, I do believe Sabo is alive. Uh, that's kind of obvious that he's alive. Not all my points in this video will be obvious like this, but this is an obvious one. Um, I have a general rule in One Piece, no body, no death. We did not see Sabo's body, therefore he did not die. Dragon was there. There's too much pointing to him being alive for him not to be alive. And I do believe he is Dragon's right hand. Um, he's, he's probably strong as shit. Um, he's probably, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it, he's the strongest Kuma. I said it. Hey, I said it. I said it. He's the strongest Kuma. There we go. Strongest Kuma. I, I really think he is. Um, because him and Dragon had a discussion about ideals. Like, they had, in, they had a character interaction. It would be a different story if... Sabo was there and died, and Dragon was there, and they did not meet. But Dragon was there, Sabo was there, and they spoke. They had character interaction. That's key. That is key. Character interaction. That right there, by alone, by itself, points to Sabo being alive. Now, before I say this, don't get mad. Don't go down in the comments. Oh, no, she's dead. She's dead. No. Don't don't move, don't do anything. Just sit back, relax, and let me explain this. I believe Queen is alive. What? Stop. What did I just say? Don't go down in the comments section yet. Give me give me two or three minutes to explain this. Why Queena isn't is alive and she is in the revolutionaries. Why and why I did not just pull this out of my ass? I have I have a good reason for this. So, my reasoning behind this is. I believe her father was um, helping out the revolutionaries in some way, in some form. He was uh, he was helping them out. So, what that caused was, uh, you know, the Marines come down there and say, "Give us your daughter," or. It won't do one of two things. Give us your daughter or uh, stop helping out the revolutionaries. And he didn't want to do either. And his daughter didn't want to do either as, w uh, as well. So he asked the revolutionaries for some help. Fake my daughter's death. So they faked his daughter's death. That way the marines couldn't do anything. And then he just told them, I stopped, you know, whatever. They just hit it or whatever. And that would make a lot of sense to me, because let, let me tell you why. As I said before, when I was talking about Sabo, One Piece has a rule. No body, no death. Again, no body, no death. A grave does not count. No body, no death. No body, no death. If you have motherfuckers surviving nukes, Anyone could survive anything in one piece, okay? Not even, not even father die. Not even father die. Father. Not even father. That's why I believe Queen is alive. And also, who the fuck falls downstairs and dies? Really? You're telling me she beat Zoro 2,001 two times and she falls downstairs and dies? Bullshit. Bullshit. No, she's alive. No. No. She falls down stairs? I've fallen down my stairs like six times. I'm talking to you right now. The worst that's ever happened to me was like, I got a bruise. I didn't fucking die. Okay, she's holding a sword. Does the sword land like straight up and into her chest? No! No! No, that shit does not happen. No, she's alive. She's... She... Dude, 
if if she's dead, that is the worst death in One Piece, and it's one of the, it's one of the only three deaths in One Piece, and it's the worst one. Easy, easy. That would that that would be a One Piece fail if she died falling downstairs and she beat Zoro 2001 times. If if she dies falling downstairs, that means Zoro would die falling downstairs back then when he was a little little kid. Do you think that shit would happen? Fuck no. No. It would not. Queena is alive. I'm I'm telling you, she is alive. Now, for the person everyone's been hyping since freaking forever, like 10 years, Monkey D Dragon. And I for one agree with the hype. I I agree with it. He should be hyped. He should be hyped because five Gorosei, seven warlords, four Yonko, three admirals, one revolutionary, just one, one, one fucking dude by himself, just one guy, one guy against the whole Marines, just one guy. And I promise you, the reason he wants to take out the Marines is something to do with Luffy's mom. Like, maybe he already didn't like them to begin with, but then, uh, something with the nobility. Like, I think, I think it's, it's definitely something to do with the Celestial Dragons and nobility with him, because you could tell when, uh, when Sabo is telling him, like, like, I, I hate being a noble. Like, I feel, I feel dirty being a noble. Like, you could tell, like, that really hit home with Dragon. Like, maybe Dragon was a noble. Like, uh, you know, being this on the Garp, and Garp was... You know this hero of the Marines, and then um, something something with Luffy's mom. Something with Luffy's mom. Maybe like the Marines killed Luffy's mom, or uh, the Celestial Dragons ordered her killed or something. And Dragon was like, "No, fuck this. You no, I'm I'm gonna kill all you guys. You you're done. You're done. I'm gonna kill you." So that's what I think happened to Dragon. S something along those lines. And he's definitely very strong. Definitely, he is um. In case you didn't know, me and uh, Zane Sane Z3 came up with a theory. Uh, I'll link that in the description below. But in the theory, it's it's a theory about One Piece, like what the actual One Piece is. But um, in the theory, uh, Sane goes over how One Piece characters are based off of um, Hindu gods, and one of the Hindu gods are is um, Hanabar, who he um. Luffy is loosely based off of him. It seems like it definitely seems like that. Like there's a scar, and uh, you know all all this shit. Like double fruits, or uh, he he thought it was a fruit, and then his father was actually a god of wind. <laughs> so, I believe that um that uh dragon has a wind devil fruit, not a weather devil fruit, but I think he's mastered his wind devil fruit to the point. Where he could actually control the weather using just the wind, like, like a like a hurricane is like water and wind. So he would get so much wind that the water would actually like form with the wind, and it would actually become a hurricane. Like without him actually moving the water or manipulating the water, he's just manipulating the wind, and that is manipulating the water, like, um, kind of like a third hand approach. If that makes any sense, it's like like a domino effect. Yeah, that's that's the best way to put it. Like he does this, and then the wind does something else for him. As for their future role in the series, um, I think the revolutionaries are kind of going to be background, and we're going to see Dragon one more time before the ending of One Piece. And I think in the ending of One Piece, we're going to see Dragon just go all out. Like, it's going to be like Dragon versus... I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I've heard a bunch of people like Mugi Ma Mugiwara Matt B say uh, he's going to fight all five Gorosei. I don't see it happening. Simply because I don't believe the Gorosei are as strong as people make them out to be. Because some people are saying the Gorosei are Yonko level. Then why why the fuck don't the Gorosei and like the three admirals just go to the new world and fucking kill every single pirate? It doesn't make any sense to me. People are like, oh 
oh, they don't want to get their hands dirty. No, bullshit. Go in there, do work, and fucking leave. And you're done. You, don't, you never have to get your hands dirty ever. No one has to get their hands dirty after that. So I don't think the core is here that strong. But I do see Dragon doing some crazy shit at the end. Like a huge war. And I do think the revolutionaries are going to play a big part in the war. <clears throat> but um, I think we're only going to see Dragon one time. I think we're gonna see Sabo before the war, though. Yeah, I think um, I think Sabo is going to be one of two things. If he is in this current arc now, he is undercover. He's working undercover for Don Flamingo. That's that's one possibility because the revolutionaries, I believe the revolutionaries are almost like they're like they're. They're like a morally just Marines. Like, they fight for justice, but they will, at the same time, they will not take it to the extent that the Marines do. Like, Akainu will take it to the point where, um, like, if anyone goes against Akainu, like, he will kill them. And in a sense, Akainu's justice is unjust. The Marines, though, they are, or I mean the revolutionaries, they are the, what the Marines should be. In my personal opinion. So maybe they're in the new world to stop whatever Don Flamingo is doing. Like, that's a possibility. Maybe Sabo is uh, undercover with Don Flamingo. That's a possibility. But I do think we're going to see Sabo. Not soon. Um, or if he is in this arc soon. But other, other than that, I don't think we're going to see him anytime soon. But he's definitely alive. Uh, same with Kuina. She definitely has to make contact with um, Zoro one of these times. She has to. She has to, but I, I definitely see the revolutionaries being like a third party, like uh, pirates, marines, and then revolutionaries. And as for people joining them, such as Aokiji and um, some people have been some people have been saying Smoker. Um, I mean I can see it, but at the same time, like it makes you think because. Would you say, like, okay, Kuma is Admiral level. And then, Aokiji is obviously, uh, he, he's obviously Admiral, he's a former, uh, he's a former Admiral. And then, if Sabo's alive and he's Admiral level, then the revolutionaries could fuck up the Marines, because we haven't seen everything they have. So they would probably, they would either even out, or uh, they, they would even out first, like at first glance. Um, but then Dragon would just like overpower the Marines, and they will ruin the balance of the world, because um, it was stated that the war or the yeah the warlords, and uh, the Marines and the Yonko are the three balances. The revolutionaries add a fourth party that upset that balance, but they're not going to side with anyone because it was stated that the Shibukai, and um, you know the Marines, and the Yonko all maintain the, the three powers. So if they sign if they sided with anyone, then it wouldn't make any sense. They would just upset all the power, or upset all the balance. Therefore, they are someone to watch out for, and the revolutionaries could, in fact, be a difference maker in the new world. Um, they could, they could pretty much guarantee victory to any side. And another thing, actually, I could see some pirates teaming up with the revolutionaries, and then. That being like one team, and then like the Marines, and then the rest of the Pirates. But the Pirates would also be fighting each other. So, you kind of have to think where the, the, where the Revolutionaries really fall into this. Would the Revolutionaries uh, be more on the sides of the Pirates, or would they be more with the Marines? Because, as I stated before, I do think that they're what the Marines should be. They're, they're not just going against the Marines, or like the World Order. I think they're going against Injustice itself. But they're going about it in a different way than the Marines. That's all for me, guys. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you later. Bye.